you are viewing the ATP Piper Seminole pre-flight training video. This video demonstrates proper pre-flight technique for ATP Piper Seminole aircraft. This video is not intended to replace the Piper Seminole Pilot's Operating Handbook and FAA approved airplane flight manual. When boarding, the aircraft is boarded from behind the right wing. With the left foot on the step, the right foot is placed on the non-slip surface of the wing. Do not step on the flap. The main entrance door is opened by rotating the top latch counterclockwise to the unlock position and then pulling out on the lower door handle. Do not press down on the door or use it for support. The fire extinguisher is inspected for security in the mounting bracket. The safety pin must be in place with the breakaway safety pin retainer intact. The pilot's operating handbook and FAA approved airplane flight manual must be on board. The aircraft maintenance logbook is reviewed. All dates and Hobbs times listed on the inspection guide page must show within currency. The airworthiness certificate and registration for that aircraft must be present and displayed. The fuel selectors are verified on. Note the elevator trim position and then center the elevator trim indicator to neutral. Note the rudder trim position and then center the rudder trim indicator to the center index mark. Extend the flap handle to flaps 40. Cow flaps open. In 79 model aircraft, primers locked. Remember, never turn primer knobs counterclockwise. Carburetor heat off. Mixtures idle cut off. Propeller levers forward. Throttles closed. Verify all switches off, including magnetos, battery master, fuel pumps, lights, radio master, pitot heat, and all environmental controls. Landing gear lever down. Emergency gear extension knob in and guarded. The emergency exit release handle cover is removed and the handle checked in the locked position with the breakaway wire intact. The cover is then replaced. The pedostatic system drains are depressed to drain any moisture. The battery master switch is turned on to check the operation of electrical components. Keep in mind, however, the battery is now being drained. Care should be taken to limit the amount of time the battery is left on to preserve energy for engine start. The following components are then checked. Landing gear lights, three green. If any portion of the flight will be conducted at night, turn on all exterior lights and verify operation. In addition, all interior lighting is checked for proper operation, including flashlight. Once checked, exterior lights are turned off. Fuel gauges are checked for operation and quantity. The enunciator panel test button is pressed to check illumination of all enunciator lights. In 2000 model aircraft, the heater overheat light illuminates. In 79 model aircraft, the heater overheat light must be pressed to check the overheat lamp operation. Keep in mind, this does not check the condition of the overheat switch in the nose of the aircraft. The battery master switch is then turned off. Position the control yoke full left and right. Visually verify correct aileron movement. Position the control yoke full forward and aft. Visually verify correct horizontal stabilator movement. Position the rudder pedals full left and right. Visually verify correct rudder movement. Position the control yoke full left. This will provide for easier visual inspection during the exterior pre-flight. The main entrance door is closed by securing the lower door handle and then rotating the top latch clockwise to the lock position. On occasion, the door must be pushed closed firmly in order to open or close the top latch completely. When pushing the door closed in this situation, do not push on the plexiglass window portion of the door. The aft baggage compartment door is opened and secured with the retaining strap. A fuel sample is taken from the left fuel system drain. The sample is checked for water, contaminants, and correct color. If color is correct and free of water and contaminants, a fuel sample is taken from the right fuel system. If water or contaminants are found, discard the sample and repeat the process 
until the fuel being drained is free of water and contaminants. If contamination persists after one minute of draining, the fuel system must be checked by maintenance personnel before flight. The fuel sample must then be discarded in a manner prescribed by your local airport procedures. Do not pour the fuel sample back into the tank. The right flap is inspected by checking the condition and security of the connecting rod, hinges, bonding straps, static wicks, and the overall condition of the control surface. All must be free of corrosion, dents, and cracks. In a similar fashion, the right aileron is inspected. When inspecting the ailerons, do not handle the control surface itself. The aileron skin is susceptible to cracking when handled. The positioning of the flight controls during the interior inspection will allow for adequate viewing. Caution should be taken, however, to guard the flight control surface from movement during inspection. The right aileron is inspected by checking the condition and security of hinges, bonding straps, push rod, static wicks, and the overall condition of the control surface. All must be free of corrosion, dents, and cracks. The wing tip is inspected for general condition. The position lights and strobe must be the correct color and free of cracks and other damage. The wing tip screws are checked for security. The condition of the right recognition light is checked, as is the condition and security of the glare shield just inboard of the recognition light. The condition of the wing leading edge is inspected for cracks, dents, and deformities. The right wing NACA fuel vent must be clear, and the right wing scupper drain tube must be clear. The right wing tie-down rope is removed. The right engine nacelle is checked for Zeus fastener security and should be free of deformities, cracks, and dents. The right fuel quantity is visually inspected to be full or measured by use of the dipstick. The fuel cap is secured. ATP's fuel policy states that full fuel tanks are required for each flight unless prevented by operational necessity. The right engine oil dipstick is removed. The dipstick is verified to be the correct dipstick for the engine by the markings at the top. ATP policy states that the minimum oil level for 79 model aircraft is 4.5 quarts and 2000 model aircraft is 6.5 quarts. As a general rule, always add oil if you can add a full quart without exceeding the maximum oil quantity. When adding oil, use only Exxon Elite 20W50 and only from unopened bottles of oil. Opened or used bottles must be discarded. Do not place them back in the aircraft. When adding oil, be sure to use the supplied funnel in the back of the aircraft. If Exxon Elite 20W50 is not available, contact maintenance for other approved oil brands and types. The dipstick is replaced and secured finger tight. Do not over tighten the dipstick. The propeller should be free of cracks and nicks on the surface and edges. The back of the propeller blade should be inspected for signs of grease leakage. A new or newly overhauled propeller may leak slightly during the first several hours of operation. Contact maintenance if grease leakage is excessive. The propeller spinner attachment screws must be secure and the spinner condition is checked. The right alternator cooling vent must be clear of debris. All cowling screws must be secure. The exhaust pipes are inspected for condition and cracks. The right cowl flap is inspected along with the security of the hinge and push rod.